Things get hot when there's an explosion. For comparison, the temperature at the core of our sun, where all the fusion takes place, is 15 million degrees Celsius. When the Big Bang explosion occurred, the immediate temperature was over 1,000 trillion degrees Celsius, hotter than anything we've ever seen in the universe. The closest we've got to this temperature is inside the Large Hedron Collider, and it's below 10 trillion degrees Celsius. One of the most fascinating things about the energy released after the Big Bang is that it can be converted into different forms. If I ask you what's common between a pen, a smartphone, the people you love, and the very planet you walk upon? All of it, literally everything that we can see or touch, is made from the different forms of energy released after the Big Bang. We are all nothing but a naturally organized heap of the same condensed form of energy. The Big Bang explosion was so powerful that our universe went from a size smaller than an atom to larger than a galaxy in a short period of time. As the universe expanded exponentially, it also cooled down. When the universe was cold enough, electrons, protons, and neutrons were formed from the same energy released in the Big Bang. These particles form all the atoms in the universe, atoms that make up everything. How did that happen? That's for another day. There was a time when we thought Earth was the only planet in the universe. And look where we are today. Today, there is no way for us to go back 13.8 billion years in time and observe precisely what happened. Even if we could go back in time, we wouldn't be able to observe the singularity because time and space didn't exist back then. Foundations of the Big Bang Model There are foundations upon which every scientific theory stands. When it comes to the Big Bang model, we have multiple shreds of evidence that it really happened. Big Bang theory states that lighter elements, such as hydrogen and helium, were formed in large quantities after the explosion. It was easy for single or double protons and neutrons to bump into each other, and sometimes even stick together, forming the nucleus of an atom. Today, when we observe the universe, we find that approximately 73% of the total mass of the universe is hydrogen, and another 25% is helium. Almost all the stars in the universe, including our own sun, are made up of hydrogen and helium. Whenever we talk about the Big Bang Theory, it's essential to talk about the cosmic microwave background, because it confirms the essence of this theory. And what might be one of the most significant revelations of the 20th century started with bird droppings. Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson are two American astronomers. In the early 1960s, they set out to map radio signals from the space between galaxies. But no matter which direction they pointed their telescope, there was a constant background noise interrupting their observation. They cooled down the receiver with liquid helium to eliminate all interference, but it didn't help. Then they thought it might be due to the birds nesting on the horn-shaped antenna. They spent hours cleaning the antenna and bird feces. Even then, they had constant static radio-like noise from all directions. The antenna was located close to New York City in Holmdel, so they decided to point the telescope at New York City to ensure that it was not coming from the city either. After eliminating all the known sources, they knew they had something on their hands. Penzias and Wilson quickly began looking for a theoretical explanation for what they were seeing. At the same time, physicist Robert Dick theorized that if our universe was super hot at its beginning, it must have created a lot of radiation. The same radiation would still exist throughout the universe. He visited Penzias and Wilson at Bell Labs and confirmed their findings. The mysterious signal was the cosmic microwave background radiation left over from the Big Bang. Penzias and Wilson won the 1978 Nobel Prize in Physics for this discovery. 
With our modern telescopes, astronomers have mapped out the entire observable universe and created a map of the CMB radiation. Flaws of the Big Bang Theory Big Bang Theory has been wildly successful so far. But no theory is perfect. There are things that even this model can't explain, and some areas that the Big Bang model has left untouched. The Big Bang model states that before Big Bang, the universe was infinitely dense, stuffed into a point we call a singularity. So, where did the singularity come from? Did it come from an event that we don't know yet? Or has it always existed? We've come to the conclusion of singularity from the fact that our universe is expanding today. But there's an even bigger question. Was there a singularity? How can something, the singularity, come out of nothing? Closer we go towards the Big Bang, laws that govern our universe seem to break down. We can't be sure if singularity is the only reasonable explanation for our universe's birth. But let's suppose our universe did come from a singularity that came out of nowhere. Let's assume that the Big Bang model is the only true model of the universe that we will ever discover. Why did it bang? If the singularity has existed for eternity, what forces acted upon it that caused it to become unstable and suddenly explode? Was that force internal? Did the singularity become unstable from inside? Or were there some external forces? We can only speculate because we have no way of knowing it today. There are other problems with this model, such as it can't describe two of the most significant driving forces of the universe, dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter that holds all the galaxies together and dark energy responsible for expanding the universe are untouched by this model 